Welcome back. Grab some popcorn and your hankies. The Sarasota School Board meeting is on TV. You don't hear that every day. The drama is real. There is a new episode every week. Imagine that the school board meeting is must see TV. Emotions and tensions are running high, but the issues are not only real, they are a matter of life and death, like who pays to make sure our kids are safe at school in the wake of the Parkland massacre. But at this stage, do members of the school board have the ability to even work together? It's a fair question. After it was revealed, school board member Eric Robinson referred to some of his colleagues as dumb and stupid in text messages he sent to Sheriff Tom Knight during a recent board meeting. And joining us for more, our school board member Shirley Brown, who was the target of those insults. Elizabeth DeGinnis, who covers the school board for the Herald Tribune. And joining us by Skype is Kurt Lavarello, the executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council. And Shirley, uh, let me begin with you, because uh, Eric yesterday at a workshop meeting did make an apology to the entire board. This is what he said. And I sent some texts that were clearly based on the emotions I felt at the time and which disparaging of other board members, and for that, I'm sorry. I want to thank all the people who have reached out to me to support me during this time. The ex I'm sorry, Jay. The experience has been humbling. I can't do it with Christine here. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Of course, Christine is his wife. He apologized to Jane, a member of the school board. Did he apologize to you? He didn't have a personal conversation with me. And what you didn't show before he said, I'm sorry, is he gave an excuse for why he wrote those things about me. And, you know, <laughs> an excuse is not an apology. Um, and, you know, I say, well, you know, it doesn't matter. But you know, even tonight when you're saying, repeating those things, it's like nails on a blackboard. I mean, I don't want to hear this again about me. Um, yes, it's troubling. So sorry about that. But it's, it's important for the, the, the people who are watching this night to have it in its proper context. Uh, Elizabeth, you covered the school board. Has there been tensions all along for the last year or two, or is this something new? So Eric's only been on the school board for, I want to say, about a year and a half now. Um, I didn't cover it before then, so it would be hard for me to say before that time, but I think that there have been a lot of tense meetings since then. Um, I think that in the past it had often been some of the controversy was more with Caroline Zucker, sometimes with Jane, sometimes with Shirley. Uh, I think that they had a set of training sessions that were about kind of bringing harmony to the board, and things improved after that, but, but now recently, especially after the referendum, I think it's been a lot more tense again. Uh, Kurt, you are a former school resource officer. You're a former uh, police officer yourself. This is your, your work, your career, your passion. Uh, every school district in the country has had to respond after Parkland, uh, and I would imagine you're thinking that this does no one, especially our children, any good when uh, the, the debate about who pays for why, uh, what de devolves into this kind of back and forth. Yeah, I have to tell you, with 25 years and working with hundreds of school boards all across this nation, I've never seen something stoop this low, and it's embarrassing that it's in my own backyard. Uh, to be honest with you, the back and forth between school board members is one thing, but for Mr. Robinson to be taking action that could actually impact the lives of our young people is absolutely unforgiving. So uh, I, as the school district moves forward, I think there are some real opportunities to make sure they do so, keeping our kids 100% in mind. And school district policing is not a bad thing. It's very successful around the country. I'm here in Reno, Nevada, working with the school district police department right now. That's very, very effective in keeping their kids safe. And it doesn't involve the sheriff's department or the local police department, other than that as a partnership. But it's still um, looking at what happened there in Sarasota. It's, it's very, very troubling. Uh, and Mr. Robinson, I, I think, should resign. All right, well, we're going to get more into your idea in terms of having a specialized police force. But uh, surely, um, the initial arguments and the insults took place over 
who pays for school security in its infinite wisdom the the state passed a law that mandates that school districts have a school resource officer in every school but does not offer all the money necessary to replace uh, to, to pay for it so now you have a dispute between the school district and the sheriff's office in terms of who pays for what are we any closer to resolving that on you know given that the school district is is talking about starting its own police force well, when we're starting our own police force, it'll put the, the argument to an end after this coming year. What we're hoping is that the sheriff will come back to the table and be reasonable. We're asking our partners to continue our partnership for one more year at the level we were at. Because even without the other security costs that we have, we were still running $643,000 short. Right. And, and, and we would be $5 million short at the way that the sheriff is proposed. And, and I want to the point that, that we did reach out to the sheriff's office to participate in, in the show. But Elizabeth, quickly, have, is there any movement from the sheriff's point of view that you're aware of? At this point, I did. I, I talked to the sheriff's office spokesperson today, and they indicated after the board did discuss that they want to look at have, hiring this uh, internal police department, the sheriff's office indicated that they were supportive of that. They're happy that the district is moving forward. I think at this point there's not really any concrete stance on, on how the cost is going to be affected. Okay, we are just getting warmed up and we'll have much more in this hour. So the school board right after we check the first alert weather, so stay with us. Welcome back. We're talking about whether the Sarasota School Board can get past the insults and the division coming up with a plan to secure public schools. And joining us for more are school board member Shirley Brown, who is the target of some recent insults. Elizabeth DeGinnis, who covers the school board for the Herald Tribune. And joining us by Skype from Reno is Kurt Lavarello, the executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council. Um, Shirley, you know, the nature of our political discourse has certainly changed over the, the last couple of years. And, and look, whether you support the president or you don't, he calls a lot of people a lot of different names. So the question is, are we a little bit too sensitive about a school board member saying what he said to you? And there are a lot of people in the community who are upset about it. They're calling for his resignation. But folks look to Washington. That's what's, what's going on there. You know, Ellen, it's not the name calling that bothers me so much. It's the make them pay 100%. And it just seemed like there was something going on behind the scenes because there was um, text messages the night before the meeting saying this is when we start. And then text messages when the meeting started, this is when they start. And those text messages that those names were being called didn't happen at the end of the meeting. They happened at the, when we first started talking. But, is there but it, to, to say, to, to work against the, the, the best interest of your district, the board that you sit on, to me is unforgivable. Right. But is there any actual evidence that, uh, whether it was Eric Robertson or Bridget Ziegler or the sheriff, that their plan was to make the school district actually pay 100% of the cost for SROs? Well, you know, we've, we've heard from people who have said that they got um, emails, messages, texts, so watch tomorrow, the readers are going to fall, and as soon as the referendum passed, that he was going to make us pay. But when we came to that meeting, that workshop, where we were talking about it, um, Bridget and Eric were insisting that we cut our budget because the sheriff wasn't going to cover it anymore. Uh, Jane, Caroline, and I were saying, why? We don't believe, why would the sheriff cut our funding now? We were clueless about that. We didn't know. And apparently the superintendent was just told the day before, and he was, you know, wanted to talk to uh, more about it also. Elizabeth, what, if anything, have you heard about that? So I think it was, it was a confusing situation because, you know, I was at that March 22nd workshop board meeting, and everybody was kind of coming from different angles. So Sheriff Knight had sent a series of letters. I think the earliest one was dated March 15th, about a month after the Parkland shooting. And in these letters, he made some comments kind of implying that he was going to no longer split the cost with the district, but there was nothing that was set in stone. And I think that for some board members, it was confusing. Kurt, you work with, uh, with school departments and police departments all across this great country. What is the trend when it comes to who pays for what when it comes to school security and, and school resource officers? Yeah, most of what we've seen across the country is a long-standing tradition of the school resource officer program having a split funding. Uh, it certainly is the majority of agencies that work in the state of Florida. It's always been that way because the benefits are 
reaped by both the school district and the law enforcement community that has an insight into the school. They're, they're, they're their first responders. Uh, so, you know, the, the trend is certainly to split the funding. And I, too, I, I question the timing of this because it's coming on the heels of Florida's worst school-related tragedy in the history of the state. Um, and keep in mind that the Sarasota County Sheriff's Department has been recognized as a model agency and school resource officer program across this country for years, good dating back to Sheriff Hardcastle and Sheriff Bockwell and Sheriff Knight. I know his heart's in the right place when it comes to kids. I've spoken to him numerous times. And so I have to look at the politics of Mr. Robinson and then going one step further and reaching out to county commissioners and trying to say that we can get them to back it. This just reaps of, of foolishness. And I'm hoping as we move forward, because it's still gonna require the Sheriff's Department to be a partner whether they go school district, police department or not. Shirley, let me ask you two questions. Number one, if you go the route in having your own private security or police department with this, uh, for the school system, does that basically make everything else irrelevant in, in terms of you're gonna be paying 100% of it anyway? On the other hand, are the relationships here between you and other school board members and the sheriff's office so fractured at this point that it becomes difficult uh, to, to work together to, in the end? You know, I, I served eight years in the legislature and, um, you know, you have difference of opinion and you, you know, work it out, move forward. Um, I sent a, an email to the sheriff saying, you know, let's leave politics and egos at the door and sit down and work this what out. What was the response? He said, thank you. Um, but, you know, I, I think now that he sees there's a, there's a way out for him and there's a way for us to 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 save money also from because we couldn't afford the 100%. Um, and you know, and I don't think they understand how the legislature has has tied our hands in funding. You know, we, we don't get the increase in funding when property values go up. Uh, they they blocked that for the last you know, I think three years. Um, the county and the cities do. Um, and the legislature really ties our hands where, where we can get a, extra funding. And when they cut our funding this year even though they gave us money, not enough to cover it, it was difficult. Uh, Elizabeth, do you have any kind of sense of public opinion after this all happened here? I know a lot of people leave you comments uh, to every article that you write here, but what happened in Parkland was not just traumatic to the people in Parkland, Florida. It, it was traumatic to, to people here in Sarasota and Manatee throughout Florida and indeed the country. Yeah, I mean, I, I think people are upset. I think people, and I think there's two kinds of separate issues here. I think people really do want an answer on school security. You know, parents are afraid. I think that we've heard from so many students, especially during the March for Our Lives, that they feel like it's not fair. They have to walk into school and they might worry that they're not gonna walk out of school that day. Uh, but I think that people, a lot of people felt that uh, the comments Eric made didn't seem appropriate of a school board member. And I've seen a lot of comments saying he should resign, but you know, a lot of people just said he needed to make a public apology and that's what he did on Tuesday. The, you know, after serving in the legislature, I'm sure you've seen your fair share of uh, motions and uh, anger you know, boiling over at, at this point. Um, in the final result, are, are you willing to just move on and, and, uh, and with the other board members and try to get something done here? Well, you know, I, I think it shows what happened, you know, after the Tuesday board meeting. The workshop is where these letters, these text messages started from. But at the um, March 22nd uh, board meeting is when Eric went into a tirade after the superintendent and he brought out the issues about the text and they became public. But what the, sh the superintendent did, he continued to focus on safety. And I was exchanging emails with him you know, that we need to work on. We need to find solutions to this. And, and, and that's what he did. I've got to right. hand it to him. He worked really hard and to come back with a plan that I think is very workable. And you've had other criticisms of the superintendent about other issues. There's been a, there's been a lot of other things that, that have been taking place here with the school board. But, um, you know, Kurt, I want to ask you this. Our attention is focused in terms of putting, whether it's a police officer or a school resource officer in these schools from elementary to high school. And we do have situations, there was a situation in Maryland recently, I believe, uh, where a school resource officer stopped somebody from, uh, from a, in a shooting. But is it proven that a single or one or two police officers in any school can stop a, a tragedy that we had in Parkland? 
No, there's no 100% guarantees in that. We do, we do know there are a number of incidents where school resource officers have not only prevented it when it's been occurring on site, but there are numerous examples out there of law enforcement officers, SROs, that just being you know known to the kids, kids have trusted them and come up and told them something, and they were able to prevent something. One occurred not too many years ago at Sarasota High School. That could have been a major tragedy, but the SRO there was able to divert it because of the relationship he had with one student. So it, it, the program is has been proven to be successful in terms of building those relationships, which we know are so important. All right, Kurt, you know, and, hold and up. that's another thing. We just have to take a we'll quick take a break, break and I'll come back and we'll to be, that. <laughs> we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. Stay with us. And our guest joining us right now for final thoughts. So surely a, a couple of questions at one time. We have three minutes for everyone. Uh, is the, bo b the, the board moving towards this police force solution here? And if so, where does the money come from? And if you have your own police force, and I know that there are three questions here, are you going to lose what you need in terms of cooperation with other outside agencies like the sheriff's office? No, I think we'll get more cooperation um, because the, these officers will be trained as school resource officers doing the kinds of things they need to do on a school campus like the school shooters, but they'll also be able to uh, be trained in some behavior health. We're also going to be spending, with, with the legislature's dollars that are coming down, a million dollars um, on behavior health issues. That's the way it's supposed to be spent. I think all in all, our campuses are going to be safer. Plus, when we're doing the, the perimeter fencing, the interior fencing, the um, single entry points, the locked doors, the um, bulletproof glass inside, our schools are going to be safe. Elizabeth, this, this proposal came up, uh, I don't know if it was sudden, but it, was, it wasn't originally what we were talking about after Parkland. Uh, do you see you know, the majority of the school board supporting this? Well, remember, you have five members of the school board, so majority means three people. And yes, I think they have three people who are firmly in support of this. I think they have two people, Bridget Ziegler, who's the chair, and Eric Robinson, who are kind of tentatively supporting it. So I think this is the direction they went in in the workshop. And honestly, it was, it was a lot more fleshed out than I realized when I got in. And I think that this is really the way it's looking for next year. Kurt, what do you think? Well, you know, parents need to know one thing, that school district police departments, if they're done correctly, can absolutely be a very effective means of keeping kids safe. There are several models of it around the country. The officers are 100% dedicated to kids. And there's, but I'm worried about the time span because they've really got to get moving on this if we're looking to do something this August. Uh, so, and there's a lot of unanswered questions with the partnership with the sheriff and local police chiefs, uh, who's gonna pay for communications and who's gonna pay for evidence and investigations and things like that. So I, I think everybody needs to come together frequently. And is there also a, a liability issue because we've had these discussions uh, and we only have a couple seconds left that, you know, police officers need to be deputized? No, they don't, they don't need to be deputized. They're actually going to be commissioned through Florida Department of Law Enforcement like a college campus police department was. So it's not even a, a deputy program. It's a school resource officer in their own police department. And we Kurt. look to Kurt to help us when to, as we're forming this and other resources right. out there. Great way to, the end, to, to end the conversation. Thank you all for being here tonight. FYI, you can watch past discussions on demand. They're available on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, and Roku. And we want to thank all our guests for being here tonight. Sarasota School Board Member Shirley Brown, who was the target of some insults. We hope we're past that now. Elizabeth DeGinis, who covers the school board for the Herald Tribune, and joining us by Skype from Reno is Kurt Lavarello, the executive director of the School Safety Advocacy Council.